Hi, I'm Kim Barnes. In today's economic climate, businesses want real, tangible justification when looking to invest in communications technology. Most organizations know that video conferencing solutions can help reduce travel and labor costs, increase productivity and collaboration while decreasing environmental impact. But what's the real financial outcome? Today we'll be speaking with Henry Dewing, Principal Analyst with Forrester Consulting, about a research study Forrester conducted on the total economic impact of life-size HD video conferencing solutions. We'll get an in-depth, real-world overview of the benefits, costs, and overall ROI associated with implementing HD video conferencing in today's global workforce. We'll also better understand the overall business value of this increasingly vital communications technology. Well, Henry, thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Henry, let's lay the groundwork. Who is Forrester? So Forrester Research is an uh, independent research organization. We were founded in 1983. We help companies to understand how uh, technology can help them be successful in their business. So we write research. We organize the company by roles. We focus on how people can be successful in their job on a, on a daily basis and generally by taking advantage of technology. But it doesn't matter whether the role is a technology strategist, a infrastructure and operations professional, or, or a marketing and salesperson. Uh, we write to help people use technology and, and succeed at their job. What exactly is total economic impact? Total economic impact is uh, Forrester's method of calculating the return on investment that uh, companies can realize when investing in technology. Um, like any ROI calculation, it of course takes into account you know, the, the cost and the benefit, look at it over time, the, re the percentage return on that investment, the payback period and whatnot. Um, the key thing with uh, any ROI calculation, the hard thing to both predict as well as to measure are the soft benefits, productivity benefits, uh, uh, being able to uh, adjust the, the focus of your organization and whatnot. Uh, Forrester takes that into account as well as, of course, taking into account the, the hard dollar cost, the actual uh, dollars and cents you invest and, and save on actual uh, goods and services purchased or, or acquired. Um, so at the end of the day, TEI is, is our unique way of uh, calculating the return on investment by businesses when investing in technology. How is Forrester's approach unique to other analysts, ROI and analysis frameworks? Great question, Kim. I, I should have said that during the last question. The total economic impact that Forrester does takes into account the risk of implementation. There's a certain amount of flexibility and differences in the results that uh, different businesses achieve when they implement technology. So the TEI uh, methodology takes into account the uh, variability in potential results, the variability in potential costs, uh, the likelihood of outcomes, things of that nature. So effectively what a TO TEI is, is a risk-adjusted ROI. So the total economic impact is a, a risk-adjusted return on investment calculation. What fundamental elements of the life-size HD video solution were evaluated? Well, in this particular project, we're looking at a, a company that was implementing the LifeSize 200 system. But Kim, as you know, LifeSize has a very broad, uh, broad range of, of video conferencing and conferencing technologies, everything from very personal systems up to large team and conference room-based systems with both video conferencing and collaboration, the, the network infrastructure to make it work, bridge them all together, as well as the cameras and the audio capture and, and, and whatnot. What type of customer was analyzed? So the customer that we spoke with in this case was a, a subsidiary of a Japanese firm that's uh, electronics manufacturing. They uh, uh, printers, scanners, PCs, projectors, those types of things. Uh, the subsidiary handles Europe, Middle East, Africa, and Russia. 2,500 employees, 50 offices, 44 of which are kind of local sales offices. Um, and all trying to work together. And the, the, the main contact we had at the company actually was a, a great customer for life size. He's very video experienced, understood what it could do for the business, and therefore was able to really plan out how to implement the solution uh, to benefit his company. And what products did this customer use? This customer was implementing primarily the, the life size 200 series products. So uh, the endpoints, the uh, bridging infrastructure, uh, and, and everything else to allow those uh, conference rooms. In fact, it was 47 conference rooms across 34 different locations that they were implementing. Uh, they received all the equipment at their, their Amsterdam headquarters, did the configuration there, and shipped it out to each one of the, the individual offices they were installed. 
took on average about four hours to install it in each office. And, and the great thing about this company is they use their, their own projectors as part of the standard installation um, and enable them to showcase not just the, the technology and how they do business, but bring their customers in and, and demonstrate the value of the product itself. So it was uh, actually an interesting uh, thing that helps them do business as well as demonstrate how they do business. What were some of your key findings from your research? The buyer was video aware, and so he recognized that uh, video is kind of ready to help his business. The, the high definition resolution delivered the promise of what video has had since it was first introduced. The, the human communications beyond just the spoken word. They valued the um, usability of both the, the device itself for end users as well as the manageability of the solution. It provided them a more reliable way to communicate and collaborate using video. Uh, the company was undergoing uh, some reductions in their, their travel budget. There was a corporate mandate to reduce CO2 emissions. They were very interested in kind of owning their own solution because that was the, uh, the way that they were most comfortable. So all of those things came together, helped them to select life size. They were very happy with life size and how they were able to meet their uh, business requirements um, and do it in a very responsive way. So um, at the end of the day, they were able to achieve their projected ROI results um, because they thought through the problem quite well and were using video to their best advantage. Henry, what were the customer's total costs and benefits when they implemented LifeSize? So this customer spent about $1.2 million across the five-year study period. Um, about a million dollars of that was the actual hardware and software, the, the equipment and solution it takes to run this conferencing. Um, about uh, 100, 130,000 of it was the ongoing administration. So in point of fact, the, the solution was very inexpensive and very simple to run. It's one of the things the buyer really, really did like. Um, on top of that, there was a little bit of money spent on uh, the initial implementation configuration and, and uh, a bit of money spent on internal training on how to use the solution. But at the end of the day, they spent about $1.2 million. The vast majority of it was simply buying the solution, which they installed and wrote off over five years. What factors should other customers be aware of that could affect the results they receive? Oh, Kim, this customer was so happy with their benefits. They were looking at about $9 million in savings over five years. And the majority of those savings, about two-thirds, were from uh, reduced travel costs. There's another big chunk that was from uh, increased productivity. The, the time that uh, their employees would normally spend traveling, they were not putting to productive use. They effectively had uh, more employees working without having to add headcount to the payroll. So they were very excited about that, uh, that piece of the benefits. And there was also a, a incremental savings from just the lower cost of operating this as opposed to alternative video conferencing solutions. They also felt they got much better uh, coordination. Their sales teams were working better together because they were communicating more often and, and more effectively. Uh, they more than doubled their uh, CO2 emissions target, and they also were able to do all of this on their existing network. They, weren't, they, they did not have to add any bandwidth in order to support this HD video conferencing solution. Tell us about some of the most striking results you uncovered in some of your research. Kim, the most striking benefit to me was the 392% return on investment. That's the kind of in, uh, return on investment that will get the attention of any financial executive. Over the five years, they saved $9 million. Uh, they paid back their initial investment in only nine months. Uh, they did all this while reducing their travel budget by about 10%, their CO2 emissions by about 5%. Improving that communication to the sales force allowed them to be a more effective company, save money while they were doing it, and put that money back in the bank. So let's talk a little bit more about the overall customer benefits. Kim, this customer got some, some great benefits they were very happy with. They, they, they believe they had a much lower total cost of operation, reducing the ongoing cost of maintenance and support for their video conferencing solutions. They reduced travel across the company by about 10%. They reduced carbon emissions by about 5%. They increased the productivity of their workforce by spending fewer days traveling and more days actually working. They achieved a higher resolution in their video conferencing without investing in more bandwidth. They improved their field selling capabilities. They actually were able to sell better across the group. And they were uh, much more efficient uh, in delivering their work experiences. What are the typical payback periods you usually find for other companies you analyze? Is the payback period within nine months unusual? Great, great observation, Kim. Nine months is really a relatively short time to get your investment back on a, on a technology investment. In the video space, I typically see uh, payback periods more in the range 12, 14 months. Nine is definitely a great result for this customer. Henry, thanks so much for sharing your research with us today. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it.
it's clear that this customer will continue to see benefits and growth as they use life-size video conferencing solutions. The measurable business value achieved by this particular customer using LifeSize is just a single instance of the promise of universal video conferencing and collaboration in action. By viewing this framework and the value achieved, companies across all industries can realize similar results by choosing LifeSize. To learn more, visit LifeSize.com. I'm Kim Barnes.